Hello, good morning, everybody. Am I audible? Uh, good morning, everybody. Am I audible? Hello, so are you audible? Yeah, you are audible. Am I audible? Yeah, 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 sir. I'll just share the presentation and then uh, unshare it. Visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Great.
Good morning and warm welcome to you all. I, Ms. Shweta Khandagai, is a host for today. I welcome you all for the 107th virtual webinar for Sadgun Sang Meet. Our topic for today is medical surveillance in industry. We shall be taken by speaker, Dr. Santosh Datar. He shall be covering what is medical surveillance, importance of medical surveillance, basic of types of medical surveillance, legal provision, followed by question and answer session. Let's quickly go through the agenda. Virtual inauguration by Dr. Sundar Kataria, invoking the blessing of deity, chanting of Gayatri Mantra, introduction of speaker, presentation by Dr. Santosh Datar, question and answer session, and lastly, the closing session. A brief introduction of Dr. Sundar Kataria. Sadgun Sang, conceived and led by Dr. Sundar Kataria, driven with a mission to elevate the quality, safety, and environmental awareness level of industry. Sadgun Sang is a series of educative, informative events aiming to eliminate professionals on possible solution to current issues of industry and economy. He is a chairman and managing director of International Certification Services Private Limited. He has done his doctorate in business management and mechanical engineer. His experiences are Rajasthan Atomic Power Project, India's first nuclear power plant, RAPP, at Rawat Bhatta, Quota built by Indian engineers, worked as nuclear scientist for 11 years and successfully completed and commissioned the plant. Engineers India Limited, first batch of engineers to develop Bombay high offshore oil and gas fields, mega offshore complex platform, trunk and submarine pipelines, underwater inspection and indigenization oil and gas equipment, etc. Ted knows Veritas World. He has worked for 17 years at various capacity for the certification of fixed offshore installation, submarine pipelines, onshore projects, and personal qualification. He is a founder of India's first certification conformance assessment body established in the year 1999, provider of total quality solution, certification of management system, ISO, inspection and testing and training qualification of personnel. He has received Lifetime Achievement Award for the contribution for the corrosion technologies from NACE International by NIGIS under NACE USA, Social Worker Protection of Life, Assets, Environmental and Safety. I now request Dr. Sundar Kataria to virtually inaugurate the session. Please join us for the recitation of Gayatri Mantra.
introduction of the keynote speaker his designation and organization is occupational health physician his academic qualification is mbbs diploma in anesthesiology industrial Ma Ma medicine hospital administration post graduate diploma in medico legal system he has also done nabh assessor course area of specialization and experiences are he is trained in occupational health hospital administration and medico legal issues led auditor lead auditor for iso 9001 2000 and bs oshas 18001 2007 He has overall thirty-five years of experience in occupational health and industrial hygiene. I now request Dr. Santosh Datar. Over to you, sir. Can you unscreen the sharing? Then I can share. am i audible is yes sir yes sir screen visible yes sir okay thanks for the invitation and the kind introduction welcome sir yeah today i am going to we are going to discuss about medical surveillance in industry okay so uh, we'll go step by step we'll first understand the basics of occupational health i have covered this in my earlier lecture but just to you know recap we'll just cover the basics of occupational health and then we'll go towards the <clears throat> Uh, medical surveillance medical surveillance basically means medical checkups in industry so occupational health is a promotion maintenance of the highest degree of physical mental and social being of employees now these two words are important in all occupations at all locations okay this is very very important so all locations means each and every uh, place where the some activity is going to take place and all locations all occupations means right from the chairman and managing director to the you know to the uh, mali working in the factory garden so everybody is covered in this is a very well encompassing and can passing definition so uh, dr bernardi or ramazini uh, he asked the patient when you go to doctor and suppose you have cough the doctor may ask you how long the cough is there is there any fever is there any you know are you bringing out uh, yellow colored sputum so on and so forth have, have you got another symptoms but he asked the patient a very important question what is your occupation so he tried to correlate the occupation of the person to his prevailing medical condition and uh, that's why he is aptly called a father of occupational health there are many before him who had sensitized the people for uh, occupational health uh, perspective but he is the one who really put it in place and that's why he is aptly called the father of occupational health now let us have a look at the workplace hazards uh, on each we can talk for hours uh, and just make uh, just uh, briefly mention it physical hazards chemical hazards biological hazards ergonomic hazards mechanical hazards and psychosocial hazards now i did not tell you the definition of a hazard all of you know it so what are the physical hazards basically physical hazard could be heat or cold prolonged exposure it could be pure illumination or a very bright illumination more than required noise very common in a industry vibration radiation could be ionizing as well as non ionizing and altitude high altitude and deep sea dive okay so both are uh, both can cause uh, health hazards so this is basically physical hazards now there are chemical hazards there are many it could be form of a dust mist fumes smoke vapors gases powders more than 92 lakh chemicals are used in the industry and uh, uh, I, i mean their uh, health effects very few health effects are known for uh, most of them okay so chemical hazards are very very common uh, we will discuss later on biological hazards doctors nurses people working in uh, 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 so, uh, stp people people working as uh, sewage workers housekeeping people there are uh, the list is endless they are exposed to 
what is called as a biological hazard. It could be a bacteria, virus, fungi, parasite infection, or even animal virus. If your job involves say, going in the jungle, you know, suppose the forest rangers, you, know, you are prone to animal bites by a venomous snake or some other uh, wild animal. So it encompasses the exposure to microbes as well as animal bites. Very, very common nowadays. Uh, I've taken a session earlier on this. Uh, mismatch of machines, environment, and workplaces to man. So if anything of this occurs, it can cause a lot of problems. And the major is work-related musculoskeletal disorders. Various eye symptoms, fatigue. When you prolong uh, working on a computer or in a fixed position will cause fatigue. Physical fatigue as well as mental fatigue. Mental health issues, anxiety and depression because you have deadlines to it. And adverse health effect due to chronic stress. So all of you know how stress can be very hazardous to uh, the humans or even for that matter animals. So ergonomic hazards are very, very common. Mechanical, it comes under a purview of safety. So I will not uh, dwell it further. All of you know it. But the most important, when uh, you go to the doctor, when you are physically sick, but how many go to the doctor because there are some mental issues. So it's very, very important. The physical health and the mental health are the two sides of the same coin. Your physical health is, uh, has a problem. It will cause mental health symptoms and vice versa. So there are a lot of psychosocial hazards at workplace. Failure to adapt, lack of job satisfaction, low wages. As so many, I'm not going to read that. You can add from your own experience uh, many hazards. And that's very, very important that we recognize the psychosocial hazards at workplace. Okay, so that's why many industries are employing the services of a qualified psychologist, the counselor, you know, to deal with these issues. So whenever a person is exposed to uh, any hazard, especially chemicals, there are two types of people, a short-term effect and a long-term effect. So what is the short-term effect? Acute effects like suffocation, like asphyxiation, like hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen cyanide, if the person is exposed to a very high level, okay, uh, then you know it will cause it will cause a cell, uh, oxygen blockage at the cellular level, and the person will be asphyxiated, will be deprived of oxygen. I was working in a, a oil uh, platform where we had a H2S as a common gas, and uh, at a very high concentration, it it's a rotten smell, but at very high concentration, it dulls your uh, sense of smell. So you are inhaling it and you will not know it. So it's a very hazardous gas. Of course, irritant gases like chlorine, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, poisoning like arthrosine. So acute effects will occur when the concentration, exposure concentration is very, very high. It will cause immediate symptoms and it needs immediate treatment, of course. But what we are very particularly worried about the long-term effects. No, uh, during my audits, I have seen the HERA document, Hazard Analysis and Risk Prevention document. It's very complete. But many times they lock, uh, lack the long-term effects. Most of these curves are slip, trips, fall, noise, and all that. But these long-term effects, chronic effects of chemicals are not uh, very covered. And the reason is that the occupational physician, the, the site doctor is not involved in the preparation of HERA document. As you all of you know, HERA document is a basis to con I mean, it's a basic mother document to control a healthy, safety related and environment issues in an industry, for that matter, in any, any workplace. So when I say industry, uh, my uh, definition is broader. It could be any workplace. It could be a hotel, it could be a warehouse, it could be a mall, it could be office, everywhere. So what are the long-term effects? Now, practically, all the organs of the body can be affected. Brain, lungs, heart, liver, kidney, if anything, teratogenesis means you know it damages the it causes the malformations you know developing fetus if the mother is exposed. Mutagenicity, genetic damage, and carcinogenicity of course, ability to cause uh, cancer like chromium, arsenic, etc. Okay, so and basically these are all target organs. Now each chemical has an affinity for different organs. All chemicals will not affect all the organs. So suppose. Uh, why this is relevant, I'll come to that later on. So suppose cadmium, cadmium may have damage towards uh, your bones and kidneys. Okay, uh, asbestos uh, may have uh, damaged your lungs. 
okay uh, the mercury or the solvents may damage your brain okay and basically lungs kidney and the liver are the most damaged organ because you know liver is a chemical laboratory of the body kidney filters the toxins that's why they are these uh, these two organs are very uh, common target organs for most of the chemicals so one must remember why we are doing medical surveillance we are doing medical surveillance to determine the long term effects of these chemicals and that's why this uh, slide is important now what are the characteristic of occupational diseases when i say occupational disease that means a disease is by caused by the exposure at workplace most are 100% people preventable because you know what chemicals are you are using or what are the hazards of your workplace and you take care the person will not be involved they take a long time to develop 5 years 10 years 15 years 20 years 30 years it's not sudden no symptoms initially so like diabetes and blood pressure which is very common in indians there are no symptoms that's why the checkups are important most are not curable once the person is afflicted for example pneumoconiosis due to silica or asbestos only the only treatment is lung transplant they are not curable sometimes there is a difficulty in establishing occupation as a cause so we don't know whether it is due to occupation it is due to general uh, prevailing incident in the community so these are the characteristics of occupational diseases now what is the prevention we can talk uh, hours on that but basically the first uh, first line of uh, defense is engineering measures we doctors come in the picture when the damage is done so engineering measures like design of the workplace processes administrative this is very very important because once you construct a factory or workplace very difficult to change it so all these things must be taken care of at the designing stage administrative measures you have built a very nice factory but are you giving uh, uh, providing enough uh, drinking water hand washing are you providing training are you providing pps pps i am mentioning last because it is the last resort in control of occupation diseases unfortunately it is you know put as a first uh, line of defense no medical measures we will discuss that and of course legal measures we will discuss briefly that later on so these are the some of the examples of occupational diseases pneumoconiosis pneumo is lung coniosis is a disease due to you know uh, cotton dust asbestos coal dust or uh, most commonly indian silica occupational asthma dermatitis is the skin infection skin affection noise induced very very common and with people using these earphones continuously it, it is becoming very very common especially among younger population so please if there is a young child at home do not expose the child up to 2 years to any screen including tv uh, you know tablet mobile etc and no prolonged uh, earphones okay is very very damaging liver and kidney toxicity brain disorders blood toxicity very common as lead uh, reproductive toxicity male and female or sexual organs can be affected and of course occupational cancer skin lung bladder and blood so we are not going to discuss this what are the occupations at risk very common the construction workers they face all the hazards we have discussed mines chemical plant cotton mill drivers healthcare providers sewage workers military paramilitary and police force agriculture workers are very common and of course office employees mainly to ergonomic hazards but there is no occupation where there is a uh, no occupational hazard okay so one must remember that one cannot say i want to work in a profession where there is no occupation everywhere there is occupation that the key is to identify it and take care so let's come to the surveillance part of it okay just a moment Yeah, sorry. So let us discuss what is surveillance. So Merriam-Webster definition of surveillance is a close watch kept over someone or something as by a detective. Okay, so this is a general definition. So surveillance could be in a factory. Surveillance could be medical. Surveillance could be you know uh, uh, electronic surveillance and so on and so forth. so here we are doctors will be basically as a medical detective 
but we work in a close collaboration with safety, HR, and operations. So what is medical surveillance? So OSHA definition is, it's the analysis of health information to look for problems that may be occurring in workplace that require targeted prevention. Okay, so that's what is important. You know the person is exposed to this chemical or this hazard. Examine him or her accordingly and prevent it or diagnose early. So this is the uh, broad definition of a medical surveillance. Now let us discuss some basic principles of surveillance. Please remember when we examine a person for a job, we are making the assessing the person fitness for that job. It's not a general fitness that yes, person is fit, person is physical will be, no. When I'm examining a person for a, as, a, as a medical surveillance, I'm taking in consideration what job he's get, getting employed for or what job he's currently doing. So it's very, very important here. I'll give you an example of this. Suppose somebody is a color deficient. Now we don't call color blind, it's color deficiency. Very important where you know, color discrimination is required, like electricians, airline pilots, locomotive pilots. So I may not make them fit for this job, suppose a color deficiency, but I may make him fit for office work or a, you know some housekeeping job. So you understand that you know just because a person has some medical problem doesn't mean he's generally unfit. No, you have to take in consideration the the fitness of the person for the job. That's why I emphasize this on this. Tests depend on job risk required. I cannot overemphasize this. If you go to any you know, health centers and all that, there are silver package, gold package, platinum package, titanium package, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, in industry, we do not do all the tests for everybody. We ideally, of course, we do test only on the job risk profile. I'll give you an example. I'd gone to industry for audit uh, and they were doing audiometry for everybody. I said, how many people in your uh, uh, factory are exposed to? So there are only two people. So, and the hygiene study showed the uh, level of the noise exposure is less than the uh, legal level, you know, accepted level. So why are you doing for everybody? So you, you have to center that, you have to understand, don't do all tests for everybody. Sometimes uh, I'll not go in this, but sometimes there are some unscientific reasons for doing tests for everybody. So if you do some additional tests, it's okay. It's a welfare measure. It's not an occupational health practice. To comply with the statute requirements, we'll discuss that later on. Or uh, your own company has some uh, uh, EHS standards. So to comply with those standards also. Now limitations, cannot detect each and every health issue. I had gone for a checkup in an industry. And uh, we had just done the ECG and all that basic. After uh, say six months, uh, that person got a heart attack. And my, I mean, you know, why, why, why it was not detected earlier, this and that. I mean, a lot of patients were raised. So we had to tell them that uh, when we examine a person, it is at that point. Okay, and normal ECG does not rule out uh, a heart problem. If you want to really do it, uh, you have to do a coronary angiography. That's not possible. That's a diagnostic study. It's not a screening test. See, there is a difference between a screening test and a diagnostic test. Screening test means we detect everybody. We screen everybody, like for sugar. But in screening, if you find sugar level is high, then we confirm with you know with other methods. Uh, we do some additional test. Okay. So one must remember, and uh, you know, management ask you why it was not detected in the annual checkup. So it has got limitation. We must understand that. And fitness criteria. No, I, I, this is a pitfall I'll uh, collect later. Many times fitness criteria now depends who is fit and who is unfit. And this has a medical legal, legal value also. Suppose uh, in pre-employment, you make the person unfit. He goes to court of law. Then you should have your answer ready because of this job requires this. And uh, this is the fitness uh, for this particular job. And that's why may, uh, we have made him unfit. So you have to define fitness criteria for you know all the trades like the jobs in your company. It's very simple. It's not nothing very difficult, but this is sometimes forgotten. So now what test to do? A million dollar question. 
So uh, that is the job of doctor uh, safety operation. We have to sit together, but this is just for your uh, overview. First is the job safety analysis. Now it is given by EHS. It is given by your suppose uh, uh, company has provided you the full machinery, full you know for process. They will provide you the job safety analysis and so forth. Target armor data as per MSDS. Now, what is MSDS? Material safety data sheets. All of you know it. And one, what is important is 16 point MSDS. So do not use 10 point MSDS. What is the difference? 16 point MSDS covers the chronic health problems. And that's very, very important. So you study the target organ data, but sometimes MSDS is very vague, you know. It will just say brain damage or liver damage. So you have to go to, suppose you are using a chemical in your industry. You have to go to the net, find out, go to the standard textbooks, okay, and find out. Industrial hygiene studies, I'll come to that later on. Very, very important, but well, uh, very uh, neglected in an industry. What is that? I'll come to that later on. Hazard identification risk analysis index. Very important. It's a mother document to control any uh, EHS issues. Accident and injury pattern analysis. Suppose you observe in a particular work, uh, work uh, workshop, uh, see hand injuries are very common, or finger injuries are very common. Then you have to analyze why this is happening. So as you say, there are multiple factors involved in what test to do, production work practices, trend analysis. Like if you are seeing a particular trend of the diseases in uh, people working in a particular shop floor, morbidity pattern, sickness data, okay. Uh, that is, people are coming. See, people don't come to the doctor. In an industry, the doctor solo is curative as well as preventive. So you already have a sickness data available. Statutory legal requirement you have to take in consideration. And availability of the PPEs. So PPE, I put it last because as I said earlier, the PPE is the last defense in prevention of ocular disease. It's not the first reports. And any other relevant information. So these are, in general, these are the factors we take in consideration when we are defining the test for medical examination. Industrial hygiene studies. Now, what is industrial hygiene? Suppose the person is working in a particular chemi X chemical. Does it mean that uh, he will be afflicted? No. As all of you know, the risk is hazard into probability. So he may be working with that chemical, but he is not exposed at all. Then there is no risk. If the you know the levels are within normal limits, then there is no risk. So determination of actual exposure. So what the industrial hygiene study does, uh, you know, they will uh, the industrial hygienist uh, will come and he will personally uh, put some monitors actually on a person and monitor the levels for a, up to eight hours. That is called TWA, time weighted average for eight hours. So if this time weighted average for eight hours is less than uh, what is uh, accepted level, that doesn't mean it's totally safe. They are not safe levels. These are generally accepted levels where the current evidence shows that the it is safe. So the important value is suppose uh, in a lab you are doing uh, using some chemicals. And uh, industrial hygiene study those is very, very little, 0 0.0005, whatever it is. Then you need not uh, include the test for that particular chemical in that person, okay? Uh, because uh, the risk is negligible. So that is the whole point of industrial hygiene. And it is a legal value also. Tomorrow, somebody goes to court of law. He, I, I got this cancer because I am exposed. You know, company can always show that last 10 years, we have done the industrial hygiene studies. And uh, the, uh, the area where he was working had a very low levels, uh, below the acceptable limits. So it will be of, of great legal value. And along with the industrial hygiene study, you can do the ergonomic study of the workstations also. So this is very important, but this is pe people are not aware in the industry to do this, you know, I've seen this. But this must be done. So that will save a lot of cost. Industrial hygiene study is costly. But in the short term, in the long term, it will save you a lot of cost because you want the unnecessary tests, okay? Or it will also tell you at this particular workshop, your uh, levels are higher. So you can take uh, corrective mitigation measures. 
So what can be measured in a industrial hygiene study? Why I'm including it with the medical surveillance? Because this will be the basis of what test we will do. Heat stress, noise, vibration, air velocity, illumination, energy gradation, chemical concentration, indoor air quality, portability testing of water, use of ergonomity. So many things can be measured, but these are the important things which I want to highlight. Another concept is biological monitoring, and that can be part of your medical surveillance. But unfortunately, very few chemicals we have this. Like suppose the person is uh, working with benzene, then at the end of the sheet, we can test his or her urine and see the you know, uh, benzene is metabolically converted to phenol. So whether the levels are, uh, higher levels are there. And if you see higher levels, you take the person out. Like blood, you can measure lead levels. Hair, very important. You know, arsenic uh, and faces manganese. So here is, uh, you know, earlier, you know, arsenic poisoning was very common. So the people used to exhume the bodies and test the hair because the arsenic can remain in the hair for even long time after death. So this is just of a historical interest. So biological monitoring is, can be a part of your medical surveillance if it is available. Another concept is SEG, similarly exposed group. That means uh, people are in a shop floor industry are the exposed to the similar hazards. So it's a location wise like boiler room. So anybody working in a boiler room, uh, exposed to noise, so it's a okay. Uh, task wise, uh, there may be some noise producing machinery in other shop floor areas. So all those people are exposed to noise in boiler room, other areas. They become a task wise SEG. Hazard mapping. What is hazard mapping? That you put your uh, map on the wall, okay, <clears throat> and you map there. In this area, there is a noise hazard. In this area, is a chemical hazard. In this area, is a heat stress hazard, and there may be overlapping also. So one person may be in two more SEGs. He may be exposed to heat, stress also. He may be exposed to noise also. And this helps you to, again, determine the tests. What test I should do. Okay, that's very, very important. Now, what is trend analysis? Let me dwell on this further. Monitoring of individual health parameters over a period of years using pre-employment examination, baseline, and serial. So suppose uh, the person is going to work in a noisy atmosphere. I do his uh, baseline audiometry. Then after 10 years, uh, I continue doing every year. I can you know check up is after 10 years. Actually, it should be done every year and we checked every year, but I'm just giving you an example. I compare it with you know uh, the his uh, baseline. Sometimes, many times baseline is not available. So you go for the last available uh, audiometry report and you compare that has the levels drop is the person is going there. Of course, age factors you have to take in consideration. So this is called, and suppose I have monitored his blood pressure over the last 10 years, if it is increasing. Liver, you know, liver enzymes, if uh, they are getting elevated for a long era. Uh, so I know there is some problem happening. Okay, so this is called individual trending. And what is SCG training? That means you monitor any disease pattern in a SCG. Like uh, you take a control group where the person is not exposed. Suppose there is a people working exposed to X chemical and people who are exposed or uh, not exposed. So I compare the medical results in that similarly exposed group uh, to the people as a control not exposed group and try to find out. Many times it is not successful, but try to find out, am I seeing any disease pattern in a similarly exposed group? And of course, uh, uh, it will help you to give the general health of the whole employee that you can project to management that uh, see i have a uh, you know, lot of diabetics so you, we should run a diabetic uh, this thing also okay diabetic program in our in, uh, in our company and though is a non medical uh, non occupational is very very important because diabetes is very common in india blood pressure is very common and any problem in a uncontrolled diabetic or blood pressure can affect your productivity damage the health and that's why it's very very important to monitor the whole Standardization. So suppose you have got 10 sites, have a common pre-employment form. It can be you know, changed as per the site uh, specific uh, requirements. Health questionnaire, very important. Ask the person, do you have this, do you have this? Once the person you know, says no, especially in pre-employment, he is liable for providing false information. Checklist, checklist that uh, you know everything is in place. Have you identified the area for the checkup? 
Have you identified how many people will be covered? So it's a checklist. Risk-based test, we have discussed this. Fitness criteria for each ECG. Who is fit to work in a noisy environment? Who is fit to work with a chemical? For example, you know, uh, in my earlier company, there was a, some sensitizer chemical was to be used. So nine people were supposed to work on that. So they sent me for a assessment. So out of that, eight were okay. One person I made him unfit because unfit in not from the job. He can do another job because he was allergic to so many things. So if he's allergic to many things, he mostly likely is allergic to chemical also. So I did not make him fit for that job. Flow chart for medical surveillance for alternate modified work. I'll come to this later on. What is alternate and modified work? So once you standardize this, it becomes very easy. So let us now understand the types. The first and foremost when you enter in an organization is pre-employment. Before employee joins organization. Why? To attest the fitness of the prospect to employ for the job. We have discussed this enough. But the more important, the assess the other employees are not at risk. Sorry for the misspelling here. Due to health issues of the prospective employee. Okay. Suppose you are uh, recruiting a person for an overhead crane. So I have to see that, you know, his fit, heart is okay, his lungs are okay, his vision is okay, his hearing okay. Otherwise, he'll be very uh, safe sitting there, but he will kill 10 people down below, you know. So that's very important that he should not be risk to others. To establish baseline health data, we have discussed this. That once you have the baseline health data, I can compare this. And to assess whether the prospect employee is a long-term financial reality. Okay, so we want a person a productive employee. It could not be that a long-term financial liability. This looks little inhuman, but this has a really practical problem. You know? Of course, so, something happens to the employee after he, he or she has joined, we can't do anything. We have to support him as a good, uh, as a good uh, progressive employer. But, uh, you know, uh, this all things should be assessed before the person is employed. I'll give you an example. You know, one person had uh, come to me for pre-employment and while Oscar did the heart, I found some murmur. So I referred to the, I said, I told her that you should go to a cardiologist and get assessed because I'm finding a murmur here. So it's for your own good. No, she started shouting why you're... Uh, doing this, why you are uh, referring me there? You have some practices, you know, you want to cut from that uh, cardiologist. I said, I'm not telling you to go to a particular cardiologist. I go to, you go to your own cardiologist, get it checked, that's all. Do, uh, do whatever the tests are required and get me that. I gave the feedback to HR and then later found out that, that this person was having some mental issues. So this is very important that at that time, you not only assess the physical, but the mental issues also which are very difficult to assess, but sometimes uh, due to our outburst, we, we were able to know. Now, the another common thing is periodic medical surveillance. Generally, annual are also as per statutory guidelines. Now, the purpose of the periodic medical surveillance is not to prevent occupational disease. Please understand this. Is to diagnose and detect early. So if you detect early, you can remove the person from that trade, from that exposure, and he may improve. He or she may improve. So this is very important to diagnose and detect early occupational disease. To establish current health data, which can be compared with the previous medical surveillance. So I always go back. That's why you should have a you know occupational health management system where I click on an employee, it should give me last all this data. You know, so I can compare very easily. And such softwares are available now. So see that uh, these softwares are used in your organization. So, so uh, suppose I click on the employee, I want the uh, audiometry or the you know lung function test for last 10 years. The system should give me, I can compare very easily. To determine the trends for individual employees compared to last year, we have discussed this. And to determine the trends in a SEG, we have discussed this again. So periodic medical surveillance is generally very important and it is done in most of the industries. But as I said earlier, do only tests which are necessary. Of course, you must check for sugar, you must check for uh, blood pressure because these are two common diseases in India, very common, and they can affect the productivity and the health of the employee. <clears throat> That's why you must include this in this uh, periodic uh, medical surveillance. And one has to ensure that uh, you know uh, we have 100% coverage. 
Of course, you can't force an employee to undergo. Suppose somebody says no, you let take an indemnity from him in the writing. Okay, that I have been told the dangers and I accept the responsibility signed by you know your legal department can tell you. But please take an indemnity if somebody doesn't want to do a periodic surveillance. Pre-placement. Now, what is pre-placement? Suppose he is working at particular uh, location. Now the job rotation is very common, so he changes the job profile. He is included in the new SCG or change in SCG. So you reassess the fitness for that job. I cannot emphasize this further. We have discussed this. He was doing a particular job. He was fit for that job. Is he fit for this new job to comply with security requirement also? Now this is post exposure. Suppose the person says, you know, am I exposed to a chemical? There was some leak, and eight people were affected. Then you get them to the medical center. You completely examine them. You refer them to hospital if required. So this is post exposure to chemicals, biohazards. Suppose the nurse is giving injection. I know she gets a needle prick injury. So this is called a post exposure. So assess the head adverse effects of acute exposure, or to offer alternative job profile if required. So what is alternative job? That means you know, the person is doing a job, but at present he is not fit to do the job. So till the time the person recovers, you uh, give him alternative job if possible. So this is per request. It will happen on the shop floor that employee requests evaluation. Okay, so he said I can't do night shift, or uh, I can't do on this machine. I am getting uh, headache, giddiness, whatever. So you refer it to the doctor for assessment or referral by supervisor due to decreased productivity, sickness, absenteeism, etc. The person is not following SOP, not you know not quarreling with everybody, not uh, uh, wearing PPEs, many reasons. I will come to that later. On. So you refer. So there are two types per request. So again, the doctor will assess the current health status, determine whether the condition is work related, take corrective measures if the medical condition is work related. Sorry for the spelling, medical condition. And offer alternative job profile is required. So that is uh, per request. So we have discussed pre-employment, periodic, pre-placement per request. Return to work is very very important. Uh, you must do it. Then return to work after prolonged absence due to illness or trauma. Suppose somebody is a meteor accident and he is returning after three months. So even his doctor is certified in fit. We should assess it. Physically and mental functional capacity, or he was, you know, uh, had some psychological issues. He was admitted. You should assess. So, of course, you should consider his medical notes. Uh, you, you need to discuss with his uh, the treating physician. You see, examine yourself and form an OPT. And to offer alternate job required, but this is almost temporary. You know, uh, till the person recovers fully. So, when you offer alternate job, the person should be reassessed at regular because he is selected for this job <coughs> sorry and many times on the shop floor the alternative jobs are not available and this this can cause problem and the last is exit not very common but some people are now doing it at the time of separation from the company that when you you when you left us yes you are in a good health that is important and of course as a good employer you examine give a follow-up advice with person physician. But suppose uh, he has recently undergone your annual checkup and after three months he left, and then you need not undergo exit. So it all depends on your company, uh, your company policies. So let us understand the functions of the recruitment team in medical surveillance. Set a smooth workflow from higher request till medical fitness. So when you are hiring an employee, ask the manager, what is the job risk profile? Convey it to the doctor. Okay. Test aligned with the job risk profile. And suppose you have identified an you know, external uh, health center. Sensitize them for occupational health. Tell them you are not checking for just general fitness. You are checking for a specific fitness. So when you refer, you give the job risk profile of the employee. Test aligned with job risk profile. This is a common problem in pre employment. Test aligned with job risk profile. We have discussed this. And Important. No employee should be recruited unless certified medical fit. It is a factory act requirement also, including contract labor. This is very important because many times the contract labor fitness is not taken. The person enters, 
without any fitness and it can cause problems. And once the person is inside your gate, anything happening to her or him is management liability. Just because you can't say he's a contract worker, he's not my liability. So in your, uh, in your agreement, uh, your contract with the, your vendor, please tell them <clears throat> that before inserting, you give, you check the person, do pre-employment, submit the report to a doctor. I cannot emphasize this further because this is a pitfall, meaning it's not done. What is HR jobs? Inform the site employee when the new employee joins. Discussion with the union. Suppose uh, I'm doing some tests, then to, tomorrow I decide to do only certificate tests. The union will come. You're doing for audiometry for everybody. Why, why are you not doing it? So you have to tell the union it is only what is required. Very difficult sometimes, but that is the HR job. Help medical team to achieve 100% coverage. Refer employee for assessment in case of any job rotation multitask. So if you are referring, uh, you are changing the job, please refer to the doctor. Sickness, assessment, and cases, prolonged illness, substance abuse. Substance abuse is basically uh, alcohol addiction, uh, drugs addiction, etc. Or alternative modified work in collaboration side management. Some of the person has requested an alternative job or return to work. We have discussed this. So that is the HR function. Supervisor and manager, very important. I would consider in the first line, you know, spot health issues in employee because they are working eight hours in a day with the, you know, their subordinates and they can you know, spot these health issues. I'll come to that later on. Refer to the occupational physician. Team with the OHP HR operations to find best soluble, uh, suitable solution and of course alternative modifier. We have discussed this. So what to spot? I'm just explaining it. When to refer to OSC? OSC is Occupational Health Center. Sickness absenteeism. Some person is taking repeated sick leaves. You know, every two months he's taking 10 days sick leaves, five days, you know. So he has exhausted his sick leaves. He asks for PL and so forth. And there is a term I want to uh, make you familiar with sickness presentism. What is that? He's present on the work, but he's not doing. I'm not well, I'm not well. And you know, other people start doing, okay, okay. We just sit down, we'll take care of your order. But that is a production loss. So he's coming, but he's not working. So that is sickness present even. After a prolonged sickness injury, we have discussed this. Repeated symptoms in a SCG. We have discussed this. A request for alternative modified work. We have discussed this. And any ergonomic mental health suspected alcohol addiction. Uh, we'll come to that now in the next slides. So please refer to a, 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 a doctor. Ergonomic issues. So what are the symptoms? Painful. Now, all of us get sometimes a neck pain, a back pain, a shoulder pain, joint pain. But somebody is getting repeatedly, please refer to the doctor. Like painful joints, pain, tingling, numbness, stabbing pains, swelling inflammation, pain in the wrist, shoulder, forearm, knees, finger toes turning white, back and neck pain, stiffness, burning sensation. So these are all multiple symptoms. <clears throat> Everybody may not have all symptoms, but repeated persistent symptom, please refer to the doctor. Alcohol addiction, very common in our industry. So repeated unexplained absence from the work. Excessive use of sick leave, we have discussed this. Personal neglect, it doesn't shave, it comes in a very shabby clothes. Not following SFB safety rules. Decreased productivity. Uh, he smells of alcohol. Behavioral changes. Starts asking money, you know, that my child is sick, please give me money. The moment you give him money, he will go to the nearest bar. Okay, because see, in alcoholic addiction, severe alcoholic addiction, it's a disease. The alcohol, any alcoholic lives till the next peg. His whole purpose in life is not bothered about the job, his uh, children, his family. When I'm going to get that next peg, next glass of alcohol, he's worried. So this is a very, very, uh, if you detect early, very easy to treat. If you detect late, very difficult to treat. His hands are shaking, you know. Of course, hand can shake due to other causes. But you see a very visible tremors in his hands. Now, how to refer? The first thing is denial. He said, why, why are you referring me? What is wrong with me? Do you want to sack me? Do you want to, you know, victimize me? So a lot of issues come. So you have to take union, other workers in confidence and refer. Signs of mental health issues. Behavioral change, extreme mood change. Morning he comes, he's very happy. By afternoon, he's shouting at everybody, he's irritable. 
again after some time you know he's very jo jo jovial pleasant so these are extreme mood changes this is not normal excessive paranoia he came you know this these people are you know uh, making some uh, targeting me they have some agenda you know to harm me so this is paranoia suspicious irritability anxiety personal neglect we are discussed social withdrawal he'll sit in one corner and not talk to anybody talking of suicide please understand <clears throat> it is said you know there is a myth that those who talk talk suicide don't do it no it's not so anybody talking of suicide the research has shown they may do it in future so any suicide talk has to be taken very seriously refer him to the doctor productivity safety issues and you should any company should have a zero policy on three things zero tolerance policy alcohol tobacco and uh, you know failure to uh, follow the sops and not to is pp you cannot be goody goody on in this all these four counts but you have to be strong and you have to take action if the person doesn't you know uh, violates you know it's like see insubordination so mental health issues are very important you know how the ohp is occupational health physician how she or he will help he will do a primary assessment at the site he will refer to a specialist for consultation and investigation if necessary he will refer to a dietitian or a you know, counselor or a physiotherapist he will review all the medical reports he or she you no know, is advised whether the employee is fit to work or not and alternative work suppose as at least 3 months you give him some alternative job but there is nothing please remember don't use the word light duty in your there is nothing like a light duty like you know i had a problem one worker came to me he had uh, got a certificate from cardiologist that uh, light duty advice i said what you do so he works on a cmc machine what is cmc machine that he just sit there feeds the data to the machine and the machine cuts the metal sheets so he doesn't need to do anything so i said what else light duty i can give but the problem you know outside consultants not their fault because the exposure to occupational is very low that they say every industry job is hard it's a misconception now all of you know many of these hard jobs in industry are coming down many things are automated now so that's why i say you know okay light duty so there is nothing like a light duty you have to sensitize the union to this word you have sensitize the management supervisor the employee there is nothing like light duty it's like alternative or modified work legal provisions there are factory act state factory rules building and other construction over act mining act and now all this nccpc oss labor code has come uh, some states have ratified some say are not ratified it so it is still under people uh, the state governments are drafting the this thing so you know most of this <clears throat> acts are covered in one common code oss labor code uh, those from legal or hr uh, or safety will be aware of this so factory act says schedule 1 is a list of hazardous processes so why this is important because hazardous processes you are supposed to do a medical surveillance before and periodically schedule t is a list of pl permissible exposure limits the americans call it tlv threshold limit values so in the industrial hygiene study this is given like if you are using chlorine what is the permissible exposure limit it is defined in the schedule 2 of the act schedule 3 is notify of diseases out of you know medical surveillance you find some notified diseases it should be conveyed to the uh, state factory uh, inspector okay <coughs> or dish department of industry and safety unfortunately many uh, very few notified diseases are reported and that is you know fear of you know fear of litigation or fear of you know punishment once you remove the punishment you encourage people to notify then things will improve so whole whole attitudes of punishing should be changed of encouraging to be more open more transfer should be there of course these are social issues they are not uh, nothing related to medical so sorry pre employment medical examination yes periodic medical examination yes so in maharashtra as you say form 6 is there <coughs> and periodic medical examination form 7 is there and of course post exposure it is also mentioned in the factory on hazardous operations and there is uh, something called dangerous operation so all 
dangerous operations are hazardous, but all hazardous operations are not dangerous. It is defined in section 87 of the Factory Act, which are dangerous operations. So there, there are special provisions are there apart from the hazardous, where you may have to do it every three months also. <laughs> so you have to study the Factory Act very clearly. What is required? Many times I find that people have not read the Act. They don't know what is the provision in the Act. Like, you know, audiometry is done for everybody. Just because it is 90 decibels, it clearly mentioned where the TWA is less than 90 decibels, then you can include it in the uh, for noise surveillance, you know, or what we call a noise conservation program. So people don't read the Act. One must read the Act. One must prepare a legal register. What like safety should prepare a legal register? What are their compliance? A doctor should do the legal register. What is what is expected of her or him for do the compliance? So hazardous operations are every six months or one year. Dangerous operation maybe three months. So I'm not going more on legal provisions because we have to individually study the relevant uh, relevant act and state rules and uh, put down your requirements. What are the, this is my think last slide. What are the pitfalls? Lack of awareness of legal projects. We have discussed this. One should read that. Many times I have found a copy of the legal act. And for that token, copy of the HERA is not available in the occupational center. Or copy of the MSDS. Now, all occupational center in your industry or clinics, you should have at least a copy of the factory act, state factory rules, the HERA document, and the this thing also, the MSDS also. Okay. That's very, very important. And you must involve your doctor in the HERA process. Unnecessary test, we have discussed this. Fitness criteria not defined, we have discussed this. Suppose you are making a person fit for, you know, it's a sensitive as a chemical, which I gave the example. Okay. So you have to have fitness criteria defined, right? Now, very important. Quality of life. Suppose you are hiring a uh, party to do your test. Have you gone there? Have you seen? Have you done the due diligence? Uh, are they employing a qualified MBBS doctor? Or they are just employing uh, somebody else? So you have to see if there is a qualified doctor is there who is signing the report. The doctor who examined must sign the report. It's not that somebody has done the checkup, somebody signs the reports. Please sign them. Are there, uh, there uh, you know, pulmonary function test, audiometry equipment is calibrated? If they are doing a lab work, are there uh, internal and external quality systems in place? If they are bringing an X-ray, is that X-ray registered with ARB? Is the X-ray technician using a TLD batch? So this is called a due diligence. Okay. Uh, so you have to have a due diligence before the checkup. Uh, your doctor should do a medical audit of the party, okay? And uh, that will ensure that, you know, the report you get is very quality report. And your money does not get this. Health register, what is health register? What are the findings of the periodical medical surveillance you are supposed to enter in a rest research? In Maharashtra, it is form seven. So all the columns should be filled completely. So somebody should not come and just find some, you know, silly mistakes. You are not filled this column, you are not signed. Unnecessary, you should not give chance to people to point out the thing. These are very simple uh, things. The health register must be complete in all respects. So friends, I think uh, I tried to cover the medical surveillance. It's a vast topic given the overview. So I'll be very happy to uh, have any question, answers if any, or any comments. I'm stopping sharing now. Yeah. If somebody can coordinate the Q&A. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the presentation and explaining the topic in simplifying way. Now I request all delegates to put your question in chat box or you can unmute directly and ask questions.
Yeah, Dr. Dutter. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank okay, you. great. Thank you. Thank you for the nice, nice information you shared. Uh, basically, you. yes, I have a one basic, very, very, very basic question. Yes. Uh, in service, basically in our industry, the service industry. Yes. So most of the chemical hazard and the things are not more or less not applicable in our country. Yes. But yes. Basically, yes. how 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 to differentiate between the uh, occupation hazard related to uh, ergonomics, what you say, the design of the workplace, okay. and 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 some sometimes the sometimes the employee itself not following the proper posture. Okay. It may be due to that. Okay. So how to differentiate between these two? See, first of all, uh, first of all. Uh, the uh, again i said the mother document is uh, risk register have you identified the risk in all your trades like suppose suppose people are working in your office or you know mm -hmm. many in like, a service people they have to move they have to travel okay right. so you know the travel risk assessment uh, mm -hmm. are they having proper meals are they having adequate sleep on the job are there any deadlines to meet you know file the report and all those things. So once you do a proper risk assessment of your workstations, or when people go for audits, or for that matter, any service industry people go for repair, repair and maintenance, attending the equipment issues. So service, I agree with you. So service people are also exposed to a lot of hazards. So one has to do the risk analysis of this. So I've given you just four or five risks, like you know, lack of sleep, uh, uh, no uh, improper meals, not timely meals. You know, so stress at workplace, you know, mm -hmm. all these things can be considered in a service industry. Of course, service industry is very vast. So, mm -hmm. warehouse also, warehouse, there will be some different issues in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Or suppose you are having a lab, then lab safety is an issue. Mm -hmm. right. Have I answered your question? Uh, I agree. For example, for example, what are the people just complain about the backache? Yeah, common thing. See, basically, like, backache is see, like, just, just, just for example, for example, I'm giving a backache or shoulder, frozen shoulder or something like that. Yeah. So it, 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 it can be, it can be because of the, your posture or because of the, your, uh, um, you can say some issues your workplace. Your chair design is not proper. Something like your this, this, this height is not proper. Chair height is not proper. Okay. So how to identify between these two? See, it is because of that or because of your wrong posture. Okay, uh, see, in my slide, I had said sometimes occupational cause is difficult to assess. So, backache is a, one of the right. commonest system in a humankind from time immemorial. Mm -hmm. And that is the price we are paying for standing erect. Okay, Since we are standing erect. Okay. Once you cannot have a backache, they are you know, horizontal. Right. We are standing erect, right. the burden, the spine is uh, having the burden. <clears throat> okay, so one has to first determine the backache. Uh, like how long it is, uh, where is the site, what any other associated symptoms, you know, does it come at a particular time, is there any other issues. So best thing is, you know, first you refer him to orthopedic surgeon, it's a chronic backache. There are tests like X-ray or MRI, so they can detect some issues. Or you... Is it any problem, sir? We can continue, sir.
technical issue will continue we'll wait for 2 minutes Dr. Kadari, unmute yourself. Dr. Kadari, unmute yourself. Sir, unmute yourself first. You are muted. Dr. Kadari? Sir, unmute yourself. <laughs> Yeah, now is unmuted. Uh, well, friends, are you able to hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, regarding the service organization, it is a big challenge because what happened? Of course, there's the occupational health and safety issues also there in the organization. Uh, as uh, Dilip Negi has told, ergonomics, how is your chair, table, how is your computer, where it is computer, laptop is uh, kept, and how long you are sitting on the chair. Because generally, if you see, after every half an hour, you should be able that you should get up from your seat, stretch in yourself, and then start to arrive working. If you continuously if you work on the laptop, then it can also affect your eyesight and what uh, height you have the laptop uh, screen. That is most important. And uh, whether your hands are supported properly on the table because uh, generally nowadays space constraint, then you may not have the enough space on the table. So whether your uh, chairs are with the arm chairs, there's a lot of ergonomics which plays into very, very important role. Uh, am so, I audible now? Uh, am I yes, audible? Doctor, you're audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah, I logged in from my phone because there's some problem with the microphone, you see. Yeah, uh, no so problem. to answer that, uh, Dilip ji, I think uh, Dr. Sundar Katar has already covered that. But please yes. do a risk assessment for the your workplace and stuff. I'll be happy to do that for you. And uh, uh, you, uh, those yeah. who are visiting outside, you know, like, you know, their uh, sleep patterns, improper meals, all that we can one day train them that uh, while traveling, you take this care. So travel health is also very important. Any other question? Right, right. No. Yes. Yes, Dr. Kadar. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, excuse me, sir. Good afternoon. This is Vinod Sharma from Badodra. Good, good afternoon. Yeah, actually, I have a simple question. The basic uh, disease is going on in the worldwide, actually. Yeah. Once, the med once we start taking the medicine of BP or diabetes, hmm. uh, no doubt the doctor advised we have to continue till we are survive on the earth. So what is your, your suggestion on this, actually, sir? See, diabetes and hypertension are diseases which are not curable but you know controllable so please listen to your doctor don't go by whatsapp university or you know all social images that you take this your diabetes will be cleared you know these people are you know really making criminal uh, claims on this uh, social this thing that I, I will cure diabetes i will cure no you may not take allopathy you may take ayurvedic homeopathy whatever it is but at least check the blood pressure check uh, the abhi, abhi, this thing. okay check the blood pressure check the blood sugar level so please keep on continuously monitoring yourself it's a light of part of a medical surveillance you know? because these diseases are all controllable but not curable at least at, at least as on today have i answered your question Minoji? Minuji, you are on mute. Minuji, you are on mute, sir. Please unmute yourself, Minuj Sharma, sir. Minuji, 
Dodji, you're on mute. Please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. I got your feedback. Thank you for your feedback, sir. So see that you follow up regularly with your doctor and do regular checkups. That's all. Okay, sir. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, Dr. Datta. Yeah. Uh, very, yes, very good afternoon. And uh, you had uh, explained very detailed and yeah. uh, very nicely. Uh, only you, my question was there on the service industries. Yeah. Now, if you see, even for the manufacturing and other areas, yeah. even armed forces, naval, yeah. air force, everywhere, if you see, now there are more and more ladies are working now. Yes, yes. Percentage of ladies have been increasing. Yes, yes. Now on the service organization, especially now, is there there is a, any act which also protects the women, not right, but their protection at workplace, uh, abuse of women or sexual harassment or other thing. Uh, yeah, what do you? Well, of course, uh, you have covered the hazardous material and hazardous dangerous material, but uh, these issues are popping up every time. So uh, can you put a little light on that one? Yeah, maybe I'm not actually an expert on this, but I know of a law which protects the women at, from sexual harassment at workplace. Uh, I'm not revealing the name of that law. But Bosch, uh, Bosch. 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 Yes. Yeah, right. For a pause, that's right. So, uh, of course, uh, it could be a part of occupational health because you know this harassment is arising because she's working at your uh, workplace or premises. <clears throat> so, one has to have <clears throat> there are two, three things which, to my knowledge, however, the experts can tell you. <clears throat> Every workplace has had to have a sexual harassment committee, and the committee should have some people, you know, from uh, selected people. And there should be an independent third person from outside who's not in any way connected with your company. So there is a process that, you know, the any woman who has uh, feel sexually harassed, she should file a complaint. The committee should investigate and take appropriate action. But what is more important is that sensitize your employment. Uh, what is sexual harassment? You know? uh, so that's very, very, sometimes, you know, in uh, talking and all that, sometimes people pass some loose remarks. Some, some people will take it lightly, some women may not like it. So it's best to avoid all such remarks. So there is a trainings are available that you sensitize your employees that this is an act and these are the things which are not acceptable. Okay. Uh, so, and that will go a long way in preventing these problems at purpose. But it's a different topic altogether. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And if you go further again in service organization, yeah. now there is also, you have the provision of providing the drinking water or beverage yes. Yes. or maybe tea and yes. tea pantry. That yes. also could cause some hazards if it, uh, water is not tested, what is not yes. pure. Yes. Yes. Even in uh, our ship recycling management system, yes. we ensure that drinking water for the labor, even the staff and everybody is... Uh, yes. Yes portable water and is a drinking water, it is tape water. So one is this one. Second thing also, you talk about the pharmaceutical or some hazardous industry and all. Now, yeah. the environment also is plays very important. Yes. Now, environment may carry a lot of fumes or it may carry some, uh, some of the medical, uh, very fine particles, which are not visible but it can have the long-term effect on the body. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have discussed this industrial hygiene in detail in my session. 
so whatever you have said is very right so to detect it just because it is there whether it is within acceptably we don't know so industrial hygiene study is very important and especially in office there is a study called indoor air quality that is important you know it will check the level of the co the co2 and uh, the, some other uh, chemicals and portability of water is uh, is tested as there is a is standard there as you are aware as far as food is concerned you know of course so all of you know what is food hygiene uh, so as per the medical surveillance part uh, we have to do uh, food handlers examinations food handlers examination for you know where they cut their hair trim their nails you know stool test urine test uh, whether not, they are not having any uh, infectious transmissible disease they are vaccinated properly so it's a different uh, type of medical surveillance of course it's a part of medical surveillance so in industry uh, uh, these people also will be covered like the food handlers also will be covered but suppose it's a service industry you are providing uh, say canteen there you should insist that uh, uh, your uh, your contractor vaccinates the people uh, uh, you know gets them uh, medically examined once a year and submit the reports to you and for simple a tea coffee vending machine how many times the maintenance is followed if it is not followed it's not clearly the bacteria the germs may breed in that and that can cause problems so one has to ensure all these tea coffee vending machines you know they are properly uh, maintained as per the manufacturer recommendations similarly for pharmaceutical and other where yeah. there is a lot of dust is there during manufacturing yes, yes. now yes. we we check uh, the checking is done of the environment yeah and the pollution inside the manufacture area but yeah. when it comes to administration of finance and uh, stores and uh, yeah. i don't think people are checking there also because there also it is important because that is also yes. in the same vicinity yes and yes. certain percentage of pollutant uh, may go there yes but uh, nobody is bothered to check those areas yes so I, that's why i said this you know in a close ac offices indoor air quality is important and I, as i said there are two types of monitoring environmental and personal so environment is just like a spot reading <clears throat> and personal will be that you uh, you connect a device to the worker and monitor take the take out the device after 8 hours of work and analyze it so that will be the time weighted average so i agree with you uh, that uh, all the spaces uh, all the play, workplaces should be thoroughly checked but again it will uh, uh, it will depend on your risk assessment yeah thank you thank you that's hello yeah, yeah. doctor that's a good afternoon good afternoon sir what's up don't you think that the machine cleaning says other yeah you know the ingredients used in that much like this you know process you know they have milk powder it's a pre mixed powder you know what they yes, yes yes containing you know tons of preservative and glutamate yes. and everything so yes. that by itself is a big every day for 10 years people are drinking that you know yes stuff. yes yes i mean don't you really agree no, that no, that by no, itself is the biggest hazard you know i know there are no studies to show that in long term is harmful but of course by rule of thumb any fresh food fresh look cooked or prepared is always better than a preserved food by rule of thumb yes yeah, sir no why i am saying it in many of these samples you know the amount yeah. of preservative and glutamate and things like yeah, that yeah, you know, yeah. with over there pehle we were talking of blood pressure yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that itself something you know i i think so as you rightly said you know one must prefer the fresh tea and coffee over yeah and this coffee which has got you know anything that is you know preserved and yeah, this milk comes from all over the world this powder you yeah, know yeah 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 so you never know ki okay, unless it is a reputed mm -hmm. brand you know so and on let me tell you in most of the small industries msmes and all they use such these powders available locally in those kirana shops okay okay wo branded to wo expensive bhi rehta hai na to yes yes uh, so all said and done so anyway to just uh, academic discussion i think yes of course of course since basically the uh, aware awareness creation that's all
I, this this was happening even in the you know nuclear establishment yes, yes. in my office so we stopped taking this tea actually we, then people yes. generally started taking green tea you know boiled yes. water and green tea you know, that was yeah. safer yeah. You know, comparatively yes yes and coming back to green tea even green tea may appear the problem today is whatever you analyze will have components of these things you know so even exactly. green tea had a lot of pesticide and insecticide yes yes that's a worldwide problem it's a worldwide problem again yes. the green tea also you cannot say is 100% safe today because you know there is so much insecticide and pesticide used in the cultivation of tea ki yes. i mean ye wo ek vicious circle ban gaya sab vicious circle you know Yes. People say ki eat fruit and vegetable and then most of the fruits are found to have high pesticide, you know, high pesticide. So, theek hai na, but kahi to compromise karna hai. Yeah. <laughs> we have to eat something. <laughs> we have to, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Any other questions? Yes, there is a question in the chat box, sir. Asked yeah. by Jyoti. Yeah. What is the difference between medical screening and surveillance? So it's one of the see basically what is screening? Screening is that you are uh, examining a large population. Mm -hmm. Understand? Like suppose I have diabetes scan, I check everybody's sugar. But am I going to treat that employee on that sugar reading? No. Suppose I find the sugar high, I will ask him to do go to a lab and do his fasting, postprandial, and what is called HbA1c. So screening is just to, uh, on a large scale, to identify, pick up, and diagnostic uh, uh, test will be either just to diagnose and then start treatment. On screening, you never start treatment. You always confirm with the diagnostic test. Have I answered your question, Jyoti? Yes, sir. So Thank screening you so will be more of a enough cam. You have a blood pressure cam, blood sugar cam, or you know osteoporosis cam. So you just screen people and advise them. So, your surveillance could be screening as well as diagnostic. It all depends on what you're testing. Thank you, sir. It was a great question and answer session. There are no more questions, so I'm going to share my screen. Just continue our session. It's okay, sir. Can I share my screen now? Yes, yes, good. Yeah, thank Before you. Sir. That, it's always a pleasure to associate with ICS. And uh, thanks, sir, uh, Professor Kataria. It was a pleasure working with you. Yeah, thank you can you. share your screen. No problem. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Just give me two minutes, sir. Sure. Our next session is on 24 December 2022. It shall be taken by Mrs. Jayashree Venkataraman. She shall be covering what is mindfulness, different types of behavior of parents in school, different types of behavior of teachers in school, relevance of mindful, and followed by question and answer session. ICS is pleased to provide you all its research and development, integrated management system, QMS, EMS, and OSHAs, 
Excellence in Education Management, ISO made easy in Gujarati, Marathi, Telugu, and in Hindi. Feedback form. Please register on www.sadgunsang.org and go in your login and give feedback. On behalf of the Sadgun team, I would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success. Now we officially close the session. Thank you all.